Hello anyone and everyone, I am Echo, and today we're exploring Amnesia, The Dark Descent. We are here in the nave. Yeah. I don't know what a nave is, and I don't know what a nave looks like, but according to the save file when I loaded the game in, this is a nave. This is the section of the game we're in. We're in the nave section. Okay, I guess this is a bit of a hiding space? Got a tinderbox, got some objects to throw. Oh, we're in the darkness! Whoops. I completely forgot, we haven't had to use... And rocks. Anything else useful? Yeah, we haven't had to use our... Uh, Lantern in a little while, I kind of forgot we had it. Kind of forgot it was a mechanic. So yeah, but anyway, uh, I, I I have heard of, I have heard the word nave used in uh, like the medieval sense. Nave was like another word for a uh, a peasant or a servant or something like that. Something vaguely like that. But I've never heard it used to describe an area, so I don't know. Um, also, okay, so we... It was obvious to check this room first, because the door was slightly ajar. That door also stands out, because it doesn't have a torch in front of it. The other doors look exactly the same, so... Let's just... Peek inside. Okay, hallway with another door at the end. We'll peek inside each and every one. A little, more, a little more slowly, Daniel. I didn't mean to... Okay, hallway with a turn at the end. Kind of wish the doors wouldn't make so much noise when we close them. I try my hardest to close them slowly, but it's really hard. Oh. And that one's broken. Okay, so that one's almost definitely going to be saved for last. For any of you who watched the previous episode... Crystal clear. So why am I here and crying? I heard crying, and it sort of sounded like it was coming from behind that door. Now I'm nervous about going that way. Uh, anyway, for those of you who watched the last episode, I had a horrible jump scare moment where a presumably. Damn it! Where a presumably blind monster uh, gave us quite a fright. And my heart is honestly. Still racing a little bit from that. Okay. What is this room? Circular stairs leading down. Great. Hole in the ceiling. Extra great. Everything sounding like it's about to collapse. Super great. Alright. Well, we've got a path of torches lit up. I'm gonna go look at the other area. This one down here. Because if one of them is a dead end, I mean, uh, obviously they're all eventually, they'll all eventually taper off to dead ends. But that one looks like a much bigger area, so we're going to check out this one first. Just in case. Oh!
Okay. Cool. No boxes, nothing to hide behind. Not cool. Use some lantern oil. Not very much. That These things seem to give less and less lantern oil the longer the game goes on. Alright. We've got levers. Got a pipe that we can't interact with. Also, I just realized when we were down in that other room mementos no, mem no mementos are available that's weird when we were down in the sewers there was a room with three levers or no, uh, two levers each of which had three positions they could be in and they were next to a machine that the mementos described as a noisy machine. Now the mementos are gone, and we got past that area, presumably without doing anything with the machine. I mean, I did touch the machine a little bit. I put the levers in to the positions that made it so they were making the le least amount of noise, but it didn't. It didn't seem to actually do anything. So what the hell was all that about? I suppose... Sorry, I'm talking a lot and not doing much, but I have to properly think things out while I say them or I'll mess things up and just keep constantly stammering. But, um, I suppose maybe what we did with those levers somehow interacted with the monster because as my theory is going and as I'll pretend is correct until I'm proven otherwise, that monster seemed to be blind and to work off of sound. And since the machine was making a lot of noise, perhaps the monster's behavior was somehow affected by how much noise the machine was making? So, I don't know, maybe maybe that's it. Maybe it wasn't an actual puzzle, maybe it was just that. 9th of August, 1839. I can't stop sweating and shaking. The warding ritual was not something of a sane mind. I did not even realize the dungeon was still in use. Alexander had his servants bring one of the prisoners, a murderer, he told me. Alexander made all the arrangements, but he said I had to perform the ritual in order to have the right effect. The shadow could be led astray by the blood of another. Killing the man would provide us precious time. What else could I do? Alexander said it had to be done. He is saving my life. I don't have the luxury of argument. Yeah. Saving your life, or tricking you, as would seem to be the case since we're now trying to kill him. Alright. And now we've got two more levers. It don't seem to do anything? That one did a little something. Maybe. I'm not sure. We can't interact with any of these pipes. We can't move them. We can't turn any knobs or anything. All right. I guess this area is uh, nothing. Okay, 15 tinderboxes left. I want to keep an eye on those because I've used several of them already. All right. Looks like there's only one place left to go. Yay. The gigantic hole in the ground area. Awesome. Uh, I'll tell you, this game, it is constantly stressful to play. That's kind of why I tend to record like two episodes at a time. Because if I tried doing any more, I don't think my heart could take it. Honestly. And it's not like it... There's been very few moments that have been actually like full-on terrifying making me want to scream or anything like that. We had one in the previous episode, but those are few and far between. 
most of the game is just very atmospheric and foreboding and dark. And I really don't like the fact that we can't, like, fight back against the monsters that appear. It's something that's actually been, uh, been a point of some discussion on Twitter amongst people that I follow. How, uh, gameplay-wise, a lot of people, like, like, back when Amnesia first came out, it was considered very, like, you know, stellar game because of how, uh... You know what, let's stop wasting. Yeah. Let's stop wasting so much oil, lantern oil, and do this with one light. Um, but yeah. When Amnesia first came out, a lot of people considered it really super scary because it's, uh, you know, because you couldn't fight back. And since then, a lot of games have come out that have sort of, you know, for lack of a better term, copied what Amnesia did. And they've been, you know, quite scary games that all basically force you into positions where you can't fight back against a bunch of monsters that are attacking you and you have to just run and hide. And whereas that does work, that is scary, it can get kind of boring, unfortunately. And at times, at times it simply feels more stressful and, uh, you know, sort of nerve-wracking rather than just scary. Because if you get caught, you have no way of... You know, if you get caught in a game like this, you basically have to... Just start over. You know, you get killed. You try to run away. The monster runs faster than you. You're screwed. And then you get caught and you get killed. And that's basically it. That's how the game seems to go. So... Failure is met with reloading at a uh, reloading at a you know checkpoint or save point or whatever, and it's just generally kind of eh, not the greatest feeling in the world. Of course, you know it still works; it's still scary, but kind of all it is is scary, I guess. I don't know. I'm kind of distracted trying to do this, so I'm not making a very convincing argument. But I'm super glad that for once the game finally gives us a uh, hiding space in the form of boxes that we can pile up to our advantage. And uh, also, is there... Yes, there's a torch right there. Alright, let's turn that on. Oh, hey, look at that! Found another tinderbox. Cool. So now the area is nice and illuminated. Um, because one thing that I constantly kind of worry about, um, I'm, I don't know. I don't know how, you know, smart the AI is in this game. But one thing that I do always sort of take into consideration is the possibility of what if we were to hide back here and we've got this light on us and the entire rest of the area is not illuminated. Would the monster come towards the one and only source of light? I don't know. But just in case he does, sure, we'll set up all this stuff. And, uh, you know, it's not like it... It's, a, it's not like it's a waste to light those up, because it also lets us conserve our lantern oil. Mm -hmm. I need you to stay awake. Can you feel the syringe? No. I can't feel anything, Alexander. Yes. Soon, I won't even be able to move, will I? Your life is safe. I don't doubt that. But will it be worth living? Mm. 
Nothing gonna appear? Good. I don't want things appearing. Uh, what is in here? Laboratorium. Laboratory, basically. Okay, and that looks super locked. And a shovel. Interesting. Oh. A lot of stuff down there. Okay. Is this just a... Okay, yeah, that's not an actual item that we can pick up. That's just a environmental object. Did I just hear loud footsteps? I hope not. And, uh, let me guess. Yeah, laboratory. Won't budge. We can't take those off, so we'll need an item for that. We do still have the hammer and chipper. Cannot use this item this way. Okay. Alright. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I pr maybe, maybe I shouldn't have even recorded this episode just because I'm still feeling super nervous from what happened last time. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not really in a good mood to be playing it. Oh, well. Oh, is that Agrippa? I kind of think it is. Poor dude. Yeah, look at all this. Look at this torture place. Jeez. Oh, come on. Oh, he's awake. Of course, that would lower our sanity. It's gonna kill you, isn't it? If I pull that switch. Thank you. You have my gratitude. My name is Agrippa. Who might you be? Daniel? Like the prophet thrown into the lion's den? <laughs> Tell me. Are you among the lions, Daniel? You want to stop Alexander? Oh, my. I. So Babylon shall fall, you say. <laughs> You've hurried too much. Alexander is toothless without an all. Yes. That's. That's not very promising at all. The sector is basically impenetrable. But I guess that why not? It could be breached by another, but Alexander broke his, I mean, my own, a long time ago. Really? Well, if you tell the truth, by all means, seek out the pieces of the broken hole and mend the way. I believe he uses them for torture now. They practically leak matter, which is quite useful, I understand. There should be six of them. Look around the choir and the transept. You should be able to find them there. Okay. This is weird as hell. Yeah, mementos. An orb is needed to enter the inner sanctum. Its shattered pieces lie scattered in the torture rooms. Okay. But how does turning this on help you? Dad, I hate to bother you first. But, if you're really going after Alexander, would you consider taking me with you? I know it sounds ridiculous. I mean, look at me. But if you find anything concerning a man named Johann I, would you please bring it to me? I believe he was working on a way to help him. A recipe for some sort of potion. A tonic to free me from this husk of mine. That's kind of what I thought. So, it seems through the use of the orb. To me, I'm Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa. I was once quite important, you know. 
Baron Alexander to sustain my soul in this dead heart for years. Who knows how many? Hundreds, I presume. Yeah, that's exactly what I was about to say. So, through the use of the orb and... ...is quite impressive in many ways, but he has grown impatient. ...and possibly other means. Alexander managed to pull that guy's soul out of his original body, which I presume has long decayed. By me? I'm the next best thing. Alexander really liked it. None of us is Johann Meyer. You never heard of Johann Meyer? My god, boy. He's probably the greatest man in history. And you don't know him? Or is it the world who has forgotten him? Um... Yeah, and I guess that is... I, I was gonna comment... Oh, shit, I just hurt myself by stepping into the spikes. Oh, and it's bleeding quite badly. Jeez. Okay, don't come near. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Um... My pupil. My pupil. Yes, I do take pride in that. Is it so wrong? You talk a lot, buddy. Um... But yeah, I was going to say, I was going to comment that his mouth looks sort of stretched out. Mm-hmm. But the followers do have one thing to allow them a real sense of connection, creation, the orbs. Um, yeah, the, it, his mouth is like stretched out and stuff and messed up. He looks just like the servants. Not many orbs are left. They sometimes consume themselves or break when used by an uninitiated. And I know we don't. I was lucky. The orb I found spared my life. And return to where I found him. I know because Alexander took it and brought it to Brighton. Mm hmm. I know we don't have to keep sitting around listening to him, but Brian he's saying a lot of stuff that's and dared to proceed the interesting lore. He unearthed a number of cavern temples and gathered a whole collection of orbs. But unlike every other finder since the fall of the Israel faith, he was able to unshackle the horror you and I connected with the orbs. He used them and was able to travel far. Okay, we're still on a slight headache. Beyond the world itself. Yeah, and his soul is actually trapped inside this machine. Me, how do you? Not the way I hoped for. I've done all that I can to escape this prison. But now, I use all my strength merely to stay alive. Yeah, and apparently, like, his soul was inside the body, and when we pulled the switch, I think it pulled the soul from the body into the machine. So that right there isn't Agrippa, that's just, like, another one of the servant monsters, basically. Beyond the stars. But I was too afraid to come along. Seriously. And now, all I can do is regret it. So John Wire. Or, or Johann Weyer, uh, actually escaped the darkness and... I've always hoped Weyer would return and give me a second chance. But so does Alexander. That's why he keeps me here as a hostage, hoping Weyer will reveal himself. Yeah, and Weyer used the power of the orb he had to apparently travel beyond the stars and I... I presume he probably, like, transcended his physical body or whatever and he's... You're a good boy, Dad. And I appreciate your company, but I believe you have more important things to take care of. Well, you had a lot of lore to dump on me, man, and I'm listening to all of it because it's actually really cool. <laughs> but yeah, so Johan apparently just. Sorry, Daniel. No time for sitting okay, okay, around. please stop. I'll turn you off, man. Let me let me talk to my audience here, my audience of billions. Ha. Huh. You're a good boy. Daniel. Okay, I'm on the other side of the room now. You can stop talking for real. Um, but yeah, I, I presume Johan probably, like, transcended his physical body or whatever, and that's how he's traveling beyond the stars, and I suppose with the power of the orb 
Yeah, of course it can't be open from here. We probably have to go down there. And this one probably can't be opened either, right? Yep. And, uh... I presume that's, you know, how he did it. It was with the power of the orb and everything. <sighs> Please shut up, dude. I'm trying to talk. Um... But yeah, it's just, it's, oh man, it's it's super cool, the idea of a human being getting one of these orbs, and if they're not evil like Alexander, they can actually, like, do that. They can just, like, just decide to just become a spirity ghost thing and travel beyond the stars and go all around and learn a bunch of shit. Um, I don't know if just anybody can do that, or if maybe Johan was so smart that he was able to figure out how to do it. I presume there's something unique about him, because Alexander has one of the orbs right now, and Alexander hasn't done anything like that, at least yet. So, I don't know, maybe there's something to figuring it out, and Alexander hasn't been able to figure it out yet. And also, possibly, maybe it's just that Alexander doesn't want to travel around and learn things and become an immortal spirit being type person. Maybe he has more material concerns. Maybe he wants to, like, try and take over the world, and maybe that's something that is a bit different and harder to figure out. I don't know. But anyway, I presume we have to go down that way. That, uh, yeah, the door up there is blocked by the wooden planks. We can't lift up these on our own. And actually, both of them have pipes that are leading in that direction, so we'll have to go down there and figure out what to do. Uh, in the next episode, because I'm all out of time for this one, thank you for the lore dump, Mr. Agrippa. You have been very cool, and uh, I hope you all have enjoyed listening to him as much as I did. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.